Hey everybody, I hope you're having a fantastic day. When you score that really sweet old vintage computer that you've had your eye on, I know the first thing you want to do is plug it in and see what you got. But that is the dumbest thing you can do. And I'm going to tell you why. Um, when these things die, I've talked a little bit about tantalum capacitors and things like that. Here's one right here. When these things die, these capacitors can... Uh, can explode and when they explode they can take out traces on the motherboard you could have leaky electrolytics on here you could have all different kinds of things that could be going on on this board that could make it worse if you plug the thing in and so what i want to do is i want to go through the procedure this motherboard has not been molested in any way i've just pulled it out of a uh, of an ibm 5150 that i've never turned on and we're going to take a look at it so normally what i do is i've got a, kind of a cool setup over here i've got I've got my bench meter and my bench power supply and an ATX power supply up there so I can run these tests, but you guys wouldn't be able to see that. So I'm gonna point back down and show you how I do this. Now, all you're gonna need is a meter, and if you don't have a meter, I recommend you get a meter, and if you're gonna get a meter, I recommend you get one from my links, and uh, I love these Kaiweets meters, and I'll give you a couple different options for affordable meters, but you absolutely wanna have a meter. Um, now, I'm gonna kinda give you a cheating way to do this because it, um, it will help you regardless of what kind of computer you have. So I've got a power supply over here that I'm gonna just kinda drag over. And let's just say this is the power supply as it was hooked up. Um, it doesn't matter if it's a Mac or an IBM or whatever it is. Um, you've got these different colored wires. And these different colored wires serve as cheats for where all this stuff is going. Because it starts at the power and goes out. So as you can see here, we've got some red wires and some white wires and all that kind of stuff. So the first thing we want to do is check to see if anything is shorted. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our meter to ohms and you can go ahead and leave it in auto ranging. Uh, we don't want the continuity one where you put the probes together and it beeps. We wanna actually read ohm measurements. So we're gonna look at this thing and you can see we've got these uh, ground wires that are all together. So I'm gonna basically just put one probe, make you feel better, I'll put the black one there. I'm gonna put one probe in here on the ground wires. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come over here to the red wire. And you're going to see that I get, okay, so I get 200 um, ohms on that. Now, the number doesn't usually tend to matter. Now, I know from experience on these IBM PCs that you'll get somewhere between 200 and 15, 1700 ohms uh, between the black and the red. But it doesn't matter. What does matter is that you don't have a dead short. And so we're going to come over here. So the next one is the fourth one over. We've got a white wire. We're going to put that. And that is, you can see that's way up there. That's a uh, 7 mega ohm. So there's definitely not a short there. So we're gonna come on this side, and sometimes these are not connected on this side, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and hook this up. So yeah, we've got basically no connection, which is, is fine. No connection is fine. Dead short is not fine. Um, so when we come over here, we'll do the next one. The red one may not be connected on this motherboard, and it's not. And then we're gonna come over here to the yellow one, and aha, look at that, we have 0.1 ohms, which is essentially a dead short, meaning that there is most likely a shorted tantalum capacitor on this motherboard. Um, now, the next thing we're going to do is just go ahead and go over to the blue one while we're at it. And that one is got plenty of resistance. So we've established that there is a short on the um, this would be negative. This would be positive 12 volts on the A the uh, XT power supply. And so um, now I know from experience that there's only a couple of capacitors on here. There's a capacitor, this is positive 12 volts, and I think this one over here is negative 12 volts, but you may not know that. So if you can get a, if you can get a schematic, uh, what you wanna start doing is searching your way through the um, motherboard and figure out which capacitor is bad. Now it turns out on these IBMs, which makes it kind of easy, is that actually these two aren't even really needed. They're the only two things that are on the 12 volt bus. Uh, but I tend to like to replace them anyway. It's real common for this one to go bad. And that would be the cause of my short here. Now, what you can do, there's a couple other tricks you can do. Um, what I like to do, I showed in another video where I used the, um, the infrared camera. I will hook up my bench power supply and put in something like 50 milliamps or 100 milliamps between 
uh, these two pins and barely um, let these components get warm. And then I, you can either do one of two things. You can use an infrared camera like I did there, or you can actually get a candle and put the candle on the, on the individual parts. And when the candle starts melting, you know that you've found one that's heating up because you may not be able to feel it by hand at the low... Um, at the low wattage but the point is you don't want to just let an inrush of current come in here because who knows what else you're going to blow so now what you can do there's a couple different things is you can either cut this capacitor off once you figure out which one's which now i should point out you can't test these capacitors on the board itself you can't just stick a meter up to them uh it just doesn't work that way you need to remove them to test them and so uh and and to be honest removing them usually just fixes the short so uh what we're going to do is we're going to get this off now there's a couple of things you can do you can grab a pair of cutters and snip it and then desolder it later or just um, desolder it. I have one of these Hacko guns and I freaking love it. So I'm gonna use this. Um, and so I'm gonna desolder this. Now, one thing when you're working on these motherboards, you want to be careful. Uh, you don't want to overheat the board. You wanna be really, really careful with how you're uh, doing this. If you're not comfortable, get somebody who's more comfortable soldering and uh, we'll take it from there. Depending on how much uh, space I have, I do kind of like these really blunt nose pliers that are parallel jaw that allow me to grab onto the thing. Uh, we're gonna just kind of get some solder off the thing and uh, see how we go. Now we do not want to mess up these traces. As you can see, you know, they're, these traces, you know, they're old. They're, uh, this computer's from the 80s, so we don't wanna, don't wanna do too much to them. Now these are three-legged tantalums, and I'll explain that a little bit more uh, in a minute. Now, sometimes you need to add a little bit more solder to the thing to get it to come off, but uh, we'll see how we did there on this one. I'm gonna just give her a little tug. And there we have it. Um, now, if you're gonna be doing multiples of these, you definitely want to uh, record the values and the polarities. Now these, uh, one of the cool things about these tantalums on the IBMs, one of the few cool things about them is that being three legs, they're not actually reversible because the outer two legs are the same thing. I always forget, I think they're both positive in the middle's ground, but I could be wrong on that. Um, but anyway, I was able to get it out. You can see that Hacko thing did a fantastic job, uh, clean as a whistle. So I like to get a good look at the offending capacitor in this uh, situation. It's a 106, which is a uh, 10 microfarad capacitor, and the 16 is for 16 volts. So you need to use one of at least 16 volts. A lot of people replace them with 25 volts. Uh, I don't have a lot of tantalum capacitors, but one I've replaced a bunch of times is the 10 microfarad 16 volt uh, capacitor. So I have some of those available. This is the... Uh, this is the uh, two-prong version, so let me see if I have any three-prong versions. Now, I know you're probably all excited and want to solder the capacitor back in, but that's not the next step. Uh, we're going to grab our meter, and this is another one of my favorite Kiwitz meters. Uh, this is the ST600Y. Link is in the description. But um, what we want to do is we want to check, did removing that capacitor fix our issue, and do we still have a short? And the answer is no. Here, this is what a short would look like, and we have an open circuit. And that's what we wanna see there because there's nothing actually on this line uh, other than some filtering going to these buses. So they're all open when there's no cards in there. So uh, now that we've verified that we don't have a short, we can actually uh, put in the capacitor. Now I did mention something about three legs and two legs, and this is actually a 106. Um, this is the same capacitor, but it is a two leg version because I did not have uh, the right one. I thought I did, but I don't. So uh, what you can do with this is you can actually, uh, you put the longer leg, the positive leg in the middle and um, these two, the two outer ones are connected. So just the longer one in the middle and you solder it back in and you will be in business.
and there we have it. Now I know what you're thinking, the next thing you should do is just plug the thing in and see if it works, but not yet. Uh, the one other thing I really recommend you doing is just taking a quick look at your power supply. For one thing, make sure it's clean of dust and all that kind of stuff. Uh, blow it out if you can. But the next thing I like to do is just come in here, and I'm not going to go through all these, but uh, this is a good use for these really sharp meter probes. But what I like to do is turn on the power supply. Now, some power supplies will require some kind of load. So you may have to put a hard drive or two on there or something like that just to give it enough power to, uh, or enough of a load to turn on. And you may even need to add a little bit of a load so that it will stabilize. But essentially what you want to do is just go through there with your meter and uh, begin to look at these individual things and make sure that they look roughly in spec you know so if it's 5 volt you know, 5.5 somewhere in that range you're good um, just make sure you're not putting out way over or way below what the individual pins say they're supposed to put out all right I know what you're thinking now can I turn the thing on and the answer will be yes but um, you don't want anything plugged into it. You don't want a graphics card. You want basically your power connectors and possibly your speaker if you decide to do that. And what you want to do is you want to turn it on for maybe five seconds. But if the um, fan either turns on and turns back off or the fan does not turn on at all, turn it off. Um, and because you've got some other kind of short there. Now, if you think about this, a lot of these capacitors will actually short the first time they're powered up. So your sign for that is either um, your power supply turning off or something just not seeming right about the power supply that you just turned on to do all those tests. So if anything weird happens, turn it off and start feeling around for anything getting hot. Um, <laughs> you know, and this is the point where you've done all you can do and you've done the thorough test. You've tried to be a good steward of the motherboard and sometimes you just got to say contact. Okay, so the fan is on. Now, a lot of times if these things blow, they're going to blow in the first 30 seconds. So um, just go ahead and let it sit on there and look for anything that starts to discolor. Look for anything that starts to get hot. In fact, you can actually turn it off and then uh, I'm just going to check the capacitor that I just that I just did and kind of go around here and just feel to make sure nothing, you know, how many RAM that's hot, your CPU isn't crazy hot, like nothing, you know, nothing seems to be baking. Um, and I think at that point, I would probably leave it on for about 30 seconds and then I would go for the minimum configuration, which is just a graphics card and see if something comes up on the screen. Okay, so I have no idea if this is going to work. I have no idea if a capacitor is going to blow or whatever, but we've got a graphics card hooked up. I'm hooked up to my LCD monitor over here and uh, turn on hope for the best. I want to say that, um, you know, I'm so careful with this stuff because this is, you know, it's coming up on 40 years old and this is a, this is a classic and they're never going to make this again. And so when these are gone, they're gone. And so if you have the opportunity to take 20 minutes and, um, and treat this thing right, there's just a lot better chance. I can't guarantee this thing's going to work. It may not work at all, but there's a lot better chance that it's going to work without blowing something up. Yes! It worked! Oh man, I am seven for seven on these things. This is amazing. Goodness, I can't believe that thing worked. Um, just right off the bat. The capacitor is cool as a cucumber and it's it's slow. This is 4.77 megahertz. It's realizing I don't have a floppy drive and a keyboard in and that's perfectly fine. Uh, but it works and it worked safely. So hey, Thanks for watching and please treat this stuff well. Have a great day.